everybody. My name is Brian. I've been asked uh, by quite a few people on, I want to set up a TP-Link or some sort of networking device, but I don't know what settings to use, and I, but I want it to be secure. I, I follow their instructions and I, I think it's secure, but I'm not sure. So in this lab, let's go ahead and set up a TP-Link router. And uh, honestly, I do not remember the IP address of this one. If you, uh, this is factory defaulted but it should be 192.168.0.1 but I'm not sure but one way we can find out is go ahead and go open up a command prompt go go to your command prompt it should look something like this go ahead and type IP C O N F I G it stands for IP configuration and what we're looking for is because I know I'm physically connected Ethernet physical is the one that I have listed here so this is the IP address it gave me, but what I'm looking for is this default gateway. So it's at 0 0.1. So that's the information I need. So we're going to go ahead and try and go to that. All right, so in 0 0.1, so this is just their, their generic one. Uh, for their password, um, you can always look up whatever your uh, default password is. Normally, it's like admin password, um, admin admin. You just a good Google search on TP Link and whatever it is you have, or whatever device you have. You can just type it in, and it'll give you a generic password. So here we can go through their auto configuration, but we're going to go through and actually set it up and kind of explain stuff. I'm going to go into advanced mode though, because I want to be able to explain everything to you. Um, basic, we'll just have the same information but it'll hide some of the more complicated stuff that most people don't really care about so i'm gonna go ahead and close their little download our app to give this a try okay so you can see right here we have where it has internet access this is just like their overview you so you can look at how you already have it configured nothing fancy but let's walk through each one of these tabs and kind of go over what, what it's about statuses once again, it's just the status. So network. So on the internet side, we can click on this one. Where it says dynamic, that means that the IP address, this uh, IP address right here, means it can change. Um, typically in a residential environment, that's what you'll have. Some businesses, they'll pay for a static address. If we click on this, we can see what they have. So uh, static IP addresses are the most common, like in a business environment where you don't want your IP address to change. Um, Dynamic, like I said, is where it's where your IP address can change, and it's more managed on there. And it's what's known as DHCP. Um, basically, it, it it means it'll give you an IP address to use. Um, some of these other ones are not as common, um, like a PPOE we used to be big with dial up layer two. So if you're in like a more complicated networking stuff, this is when you get into more of these other ones. But like I said, most of the time it's either dynamic where it's automatically this is what it gives you or you can set it statically and then whatever your uh, internet service provider tells you um, so this would be your public IP address and this is the information that they would give you but this was correct on mine so I'm going to go ahead and set it back to dynamic and then on the LAN side um, so this is what is known as your local area network this is what your devices see that's connected inside of your your network so in a residential and small office, you'll see 192.168.0. Dot and one dots, which it's fine, but I always personally like to change it to something different. So like I will change mine to 99. Dot. Um, this is what is known as a private address space. Um, if you're ever curious, you can look up a private address spacing on Google. Um, so you'll, anything that begins with a 10 or you'll see a 172.16 for example, or the 192.168, those are what is known as private addresses. You can use them however you want, but they can't be routed on the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and click this, go ahead and save these changes, and it'll just take it a little bit of time. So let's go ahead and just wait until that gets done.
All right, now that we're back, we can see that it appeared on the address pot where we typed 192.168.0.1 initially. Now we can see it's .99, so that's our, our private IP address. Let's go ahead and type in our super secret password. No, I don't want to save it. Thank you. We'll go ahead and go back over to advanced and take a look at this other options. So the other stuff we don't really have to worry about. The big thing that um, most people you'll need to worry to adjust is uh, DHCP. So that's the one that I was saying about where um, do I want it to give out addresses for me or do I want to have to manually go to each device and set it up? So right here we can see 192.168. So from 100 to 199 is what this is giving me. So that tells me that's how many devices I can have that it will automatically take care of. Maybe I want to adjust this range down. I can do that here. Um, how long does it, how long do they have the address for, for example? That's a common one. Uh, DNS, so like say you have a an internal domain controller or something that's doing name, name resolution. Uh, say you have a Windows server that's, that's how everybody can kind of log in. That's where you'll go ahead and set that there. And then down here's reservations. Um, this is where you can go and tell it, hey, this device, I always want to have this address. For example, I'm not going to go into how to do it, but as you can see in here, it looks pretty easy. Just the MAC address, you can get it from your computer and then whatever IP address you want. And then you can see what devices are con currently connected. As you can see, um, server two is the device we're on right now. So that's the only device on this network. Dynamic DNS, this is, um, so if you have it like if it's public facing like out on the internet and you want to have be able to to uh, you have one of those what we talked about where it's a DHCP address. So here, if you have a DHCP address, instead of having to remember that address that changes, you have to remember a name, right? So that's basically what this is. These are different services that offer it. Um, TP-Link has one, no IP, dynamic DNS. Some of them cost. Some of them are free. Ultimately, you would just go to whatever your provider is and log in with it. And how often do you want it to update? Um, as you can see, they they all look very the same. Um, TP-Link obviously is the creator of this device, so they kind of want you to use theirs, but you're not forced to. All right, since I don't have that, I'm not going to worry about that. So let's come down to wireless wireless settings. This is where I've noticed a lot of people get um, hesitant on making changes. Ultimately, you should change whatever the default name is. Where this one says it's a TP-Link, you don't want that to be that way forever because then maybe, maybe someone knows how to kind of get into stuff. If they know you already have a TP-Link, then they can try and find the weaknesses for TP-Link. So it makes it easier. So if you just set something different like my Wi-Fi or whatever you want, hide SSID, that just makes it harder to see it. Um, so if you come down and click on your uh, wireless adapters, or you go to your wireless, and that means it won't display the name there. Uh, security, this is where a lot of people get a little confused because there's so many options anymore with the security. Now, this one's not too complicated. No security. I would highly encourage you not to use that. Uh, the most common is used is WPA, WPA2, personal. Uh, WPA2 is probably the most secure at the moment. I think they're coming up with WPA3. Uh, personal and enterprise, the only difference is there are, uh, for enterprise, you have to have a little more settings. Uh, personal means you're using a, a password. So we're just going to use that one and this one. Uh, WEP is very insecure. Um, that was was known as wired equivalent privacy, which isn't very secure. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Um, what I always do for my own peace of mind, because WPA, like I said, is not really secure. I always go to WP, make it use WPA2 personal, where, where it says WPA2 PSK, that means password. I always tell it to do that, and I always tell it to use AES encryption, because that way it removes any any chances that it's not going to do it. So password, you'd set your password to whatever you'd like. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at this one for this demonstration. Mode. This is so maybe you have multiple devices that and some older devices. Um, so that's where you'd see the, the 80211 standards. So you have A, B, N, so many different standards to try and keep up with. Um, most commonly, you'll try and have it have the most coverage for whatever devices you have. If you have a bunch of new devices, normally you can get by with most of the latest uh, channel width. 
It's always good to leave those to auto. If you notice that you're having some performance issues, you can come in and tweak those. Uh, power level. Uh, if you have multiple access points, that's where that would be come in to be an issue. As you can see, we configured it on the 2.5 side. We can also come up here and change this. So if we come over here, we can see on the 5 gigahertz side that we didn't change it. That was only on the 2.4 gigahertz we changed that. So I will set this as my Wi-Fi 5G. And then I'll do the exact same thing. I will always do tell it to use the most secure options we have. And we'll save this as well. So if we come over here, we didn't click save initially. So let's go ahead and do it on the uh, 2.4 as well. And make sure we click save. It's, that will save you a bunch of time and headaches. Um, if you look over here, WPS, that's that button that's on the back of your device where you can push it and you just go over to whatever device you want it to connect. You push that again and it connects. This is actually very insecure. So I personally recommend everyone who does not have a need for it to disable this. Because um, you can see where you have push button. But with it, with it being disabled, it's more secure. Um, they found that out that there's a security flaw in it. Uh, that's, so it, it's it's more secure than not having a password, but not by much. So I personally recommend disabling that. And then statistics and more advanced MIMO routing and stuff. Uh, if your your device has this one, I always recommend enabling it. Um, the MIMO that's multiple input, multiple output. So if you have uh, devices that can utilize it, go ahead and turn it on. So under a guest network, it's always a good idea to have a separate network. So you have somebody coming over and neighbors or maybe not you maybe not your neighbors, but you want to have your friends to be able to connect to your internet. It's always a good idea to to have this. Uh, do you want them to see each other? Typically not. Uh, all depends on the year environment, but typically you don't have that. And do you want them to have access to your local area network? So should the people that's connected on your wireless guest wireless be able to communicate to say your desktop at your house uh, typically that's not a thing you would want so let's go ahead and enable guest and we'll do and we can go ahead and add a it's always a good idea to add some security in here so we'll go ahead and do this as well um, Typically, you unless you're in a like a coffee shop environment or some place where you're, you know you're gonna have a bunch of people and you don't want them to asking for wireless passwords, um, we'll go ahead and do this. Um, to save it and uh, make sure that we have a secure one. Obviously, we would not want to have the same password as our actual network. We'll just go ahead and click save on both of those, and just like that, we've configured the wireless. So coming down, you can see there's other settings on this one that's unique to TP-Link. So if you wanted a print server or a file server, whatever. Um, this is more the advanced stuff that you, you really don't have to get into as much. One area I'd recommend, though, is come down here in administration. Make sure you change the default password where this one was admin. The, anybody that knows that can go, hey, look, you got a TP link router and... We're, the first thing that they, they're going to do is try and use whatever password it is. So go ahead and put in a good pass, a good secure password here. And then I've also seen where people use the uh, password recovery. That's a good idea. I've also used this one myself personally. Um, so if I know what devices I want to have access to my management. Um, so like say this this device is plugged in on the LAN. I know this is my computer. I want to be able to access the management, but I don't want other everybody to access the management on this. So the, here's where I would actually come in and actually specify this. Um, but as you can see, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, remote management. This is, means you're opening it up to the internet. Um, typically, you do not want to do that unless you are working with a service provider and where they will lock it down to their IP addresses. Um, you'll see something like this. And then uh, remote management IP addresses, and then they'll lock it down into theirs so that way only they can access it and it's not open up to the entire internet. 
I'm going to disable that because I really don't like the idea of that being on. So by doing that, we just turned on some basic security, but this basic security will keep you safe. Well, I hope this has been informative for you. If you wouldn't mind, go ahead and click a like, maybe subscribe, hit the bell notification if you want to notify whenever we make new content. And thanks for watching.